I would like to thank Sarina for this opportunity to talk here for you. I work at the British Library, I'm one of the digital curators there, and uh, ebooks is one of my areas of uh, expertise and interest. I just came back from Brazil, also I was talking about ebooks, and we are also trying to deal with uh, a program, a project for uh, lending ebooks to public libraries in Brazil. And I'm going to talk about ebooks in general. And what struck me first when I was invited for this talk, I, I probably have to talk more, was that, uh, well, the title, uh, Print versus E, Electronic, uh, which is very interesting because uh, when you ask uh, opinions about ebooks, people normally say, well, I don't like ebooks because I like the real thing. I like to touch the book, I like the smell of the book. So physicality is something very, very important for readers. It's not only the content here, but the, the book starts to be an object of desire, really. If you look at the very, very early uh, descriptions of e-books, this one is 1997, so we always tend to compare the electronic copy to the paper one. The paper is the supreme, and the electronic is the surrogate. That's normally the issue. But this is going to change in soon, I hope. Uh, that's also an image that shows like ebooks here, but we see there's no difference between a shelf, a real one, and a virtual one. It's quite uh, misleading as well. Um, we see a very quick change in uh, reading habits and patterns today, and uh, this is not new. I mean, it happened before. When the print came uh, on in, uh, at the end of the 16th century, we see that it wasn't really well received. I mean, it was, you know, I, you know, it did promote a change in the reading habits and uh, knowledge as well. But uh, I found it fascinating to look at uh, um, images like engravings and so forth, and see that at the end of the 16th century, what we see here is uh, kind of the print uh, shown as something very devilish, like uh, really something that was related really to death or something was was going to kill something was knowledge was uh, what and you see this is an uh, image that depicts this very well so when you move on to when print was really accepted that's like after enlightenment and so forth we see that the print is completely different it's coming out from heavens we see here Gutenberg and uh, we see the print uh, print machine coming descending from heavens so we see that a whole different culture of acceptance that is also happening now. So people are more prone to accept books than before because they become more popular, they become cheaper, they become more accessible. It's not something that's strange to them. Um, as we see the technolo uh, technological advance, we are also witnessing the new habits of reading. We have still a big gap between the digital natives and the digital immigrants. Uh, it's very difficult for us to work on both sides. This gap is going to be na uh, narrow and narrow in the coming years, I hope. But we have still to deal with two kinds of republics. And uh, that's the main challenge that we have. We have to understand this behavior. We have to understand the shift between paper and digital and see them as not really a new step within reading habits, but a completely different concept of knowledge and uh, uh, reading itself. There is a, I mean, the digital content bring a revolution. It's like uh, Elizabeth Einstein, I don't know if you're familiar with her uh, work, she mentioned that when the book came on, uh, it changed the whole concept of uh, reading and knowledge as well. Knowledge became more uh, democratic, so to uh, speak. Uh, it became more accessible. It went from the uh, clusters to the universities. So there's a whole shift of attitude with the print. That's what we, it's happening now. But still, we have, like, um, here, uh, using uh, Umberto Eco's quote, or not quote, but words, we have the ones who think that everyone agrees that the, pre, uh, the electronic medium is changing our reading habits. Some people think that is bad, like Nicholas Carr, and some other people think that is good. We are becoming more democratic. There is, there is no hierarchies anymore. There's only links. So things, people think that this structure also makes a big difference in the way we socialize and the way we uh, communicate information. I think that that's an interesting, I mean, the image is not very clear, but it's a report commissioned by the EU some years ago to justify the existence of Europeana. 
and they call it the new renaissance. The, re re uh, the new renaissance is like uh, is almost like uh, a metaphor for the electronic uh, world in the sense that we are having other perspectives to see uh, things. We are not seeing things in a flat world anymore. We are seeing them virtually. And the hyperfax ma makes a big difference in this concept. What is the market for the e-books? Uh, at the British Library, of course, we are extremely um, not worried, well, I would say worried, yes, uh, with the upcoming of e-books, especially because we still don't have an Ill illegal deposit uh, uh, law. We have a deposit law for print, but not for electronic material. So we are waiting this to be implemented, but publishers are still a bit reluctant in you know, giving up a work for us to make available for the wider public. So we are already thinking ahead. We're thinking about 2020, how the market will be, what people are going to, uh, what, what users are going to uh, access, what do they want, what would be the information needs. So we are really, really thinking of this context within the world of electronic uh, materials. Uh, but for now, we have already an increase of uh, ebook selling in the market, in the publishing market. You see that the ebook selling uh, has a rise of 318% last year in comparison to the previous year. This is because uh, of the launch of uh, Kindle 3 and also, of course, iPad. iPad is really bringing a big, big, uh, and tablets in general, but iPad is bringing a new, uh, is democratizing, so to speak, uh, the consumption of ebooks. We think that the more and more titles will be coming in digital format, and I think that's quite obvious, obvious, you see. And uh, in, uh, this is not a UK research, it's a US research, it's not funded by the British Library. But uh, in a research done with uh, 1,200 evil uh, owners, 40% uh, of this public said that they are reading more than they did before with printed. So this is something that's changing. People are reading more, even if they are reading in a kind of more erratic way, in a hyperlink way. But it doesn't matter as long as they are reading. So the market is there, so we need to grab it and use it in the best way possible. Uh, this is how uh, the British Library um, idea or research, uh, not research, but the kind of uh, what, what we think is going to happen in 2020. Uh, we think that 20% uh, of the title will be published only in paper format. 40% uh, will be published only in electronic format, something between 40% will be hybrid, both formats. But you see the trend here is for electronic to push down both uh, print and hybrid formats. So if you try to think about 2040, probably the number of electronic publications will be up to here, and the rest will be between hybrid and uh, print. But we don't know, we can't go that far. This is just a, like a forecast, really. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, e-books and uh, how they are, they are being used in academic uh, context, uh, I really advise you to go to the DISC e-books project, which is a very interesting, uh, it's called the National Observatory, uh, called the National e-books Observatory project. It's very interesting because it is looking at uh, academic publications and how they are being used in libraries and what users or want, you know, like the researchers want to uh, get from this ebook market. <laughs>